Voltaire, Francois Marie Arrette, a French Enlightenment writer, historian, and philosopher famous for his wit, his criticism of Christianity, especially the Roman Catholic Church, as well as his advocacy of freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and separation of church and state. He was an outspoken advocate of civil liberties and was at constant risk from the strict censorship laws of the Catholic French monarchy. His polemics witheringly satirized intolerance, religious dogma, and French institutions of his day. It is characteristic of fanatics who read the holy scriptures to tell themselves, God killed, so I must kill. Abraham lied, Jacob deceived, Rachel stall, so I must steal, deceive, lie. But, wretch, you are neither Rachel, nor Jacob, nor Abraham, nor God. You are just a mad fool. And the popes who forbade the reading of the Bible were extremely wise. As Christianity advances, disasters befall the Roman Empire. Arts, science, literature, decay, barbarism, and all its revolting concomitants are made to seem the consequences of its decisive triumph, and the unwary reader is conducted with matchless dexterity to the desired conclusion, the abominable manichaeism of Candid, and in fact, of all the productions of Voltaire's historic school, viz, that instead of being merciful, amelorating, benignant, visitation, the religion of Christians would rather seem to be a scourge sent on man by the author of all evil. The Veda was the most precious gift for which the West had ever been indebted to the East. Confucius has no interest in falsehood. He did not pretend to be prophet. He claimed no inspiration. He taught no new religion. He used no delusions, flattered not the emperor under whom he lived. Italy had a renaissance, and Germany had a reformation, but France had Voltaire. He was for his country both renaissance and reformation, and half of the revolution. He was the first and best in his time in his conception and writing of history, in the grace of his poetry, in the charm and wit of his prose, in the range of his thoughts and his influence, his spirits moved like a flame over the continents and the century, and stirs a million souls in every generation. No one has ever employed so much intellect to persuade men to be beasts, in reading your work, one is seized with a desire to walk on all fours. However, as it is more than sixty years since I lost that habit, I feel, unfortunately, that it is impossible for me to resume it. No more about John Jacques' romance, if you please. I have read it to my sorrow, and it would be to his if I had time to say what I think of your silly book.